everybody. Welcome to our BNI Talks webinar. My name is Steve Tenuzzo, your host, and today I have another Stephen, Stephen Lentz, and he is going to tell us all about Google and uh, give us a little education. I got a little preview before we started, so there's really interesting stuff here. So feel free to take notes and, of course, ask your questions for after the presentation. So I'm going to turn it over to Stephen right now. Take it away. Awesome. Thanks, Steve. So obviously I spilled the beans, right? How to be more visible on Google. And I talk in a million different directions. So I'm gonna to apologize to everyone who thinks linearly because I just don't. <laughs> and, but I do promise that it will be entertaining if not educational. So we're gonna get into it. Yeah, battle of Steve's here. But as always, there's always like, well, who are you and why should I care? Uh, you know, I was a firefighter for 10 years. I'm wearing, repping my swag here, my IFF shirt. Uh, and I wasn't always entrepreneurial and I got hired on department, didn't have money from me. Another guy got laid off, got hired back in another department, same thing. And I, you know, I did fix some real estate, life insurance over the phone, Kirby vacuums door to door, the whole gambit. And I was like, life sucks. And got back into firefighting when they had money for me and like, Hey, do you want to do this? I was like, yeah, I was picking up grandma off the floor. Right. But I got into marketing because I wanted to make a better life for myself and my family and take control of that in a life that I felt like I didn't have any control of. So I got really good at it and eventually made my exodus out of the fire service uh, at the beginning of this year. So keeping it really short because we got a lot of stuff to go through and I know that we're going to run out of time. So well, and, well before we do that, you're a member yeah. in which chapter? I am. I am a member in the Amazing Eastsiders. So we're a new group. I think February or April was our, our first chapter right. meeting. So Come visit us. We're friendly. I promise. I have the uh, the education coordinator seat, and I am the resident court jester. So that's that's my title. <laughs> wow. All right. All good. Yeah. Ocelot traffic is my business, and digital marketing is like the black hole of marketing. It means a million different things, and is this weird nebulous term. So. I focus on third-party credibility and validation. And what that means is I'm going to show you because I could just talk forever and you still be like, I don't really get what he does, right? So this is a campaign we ran. We run monthly campaigns and we get our clients organically on the first page of Google, right? Up in the map pack. And then, you know, a news article, a different blog post. This is a Yelp review from Yelp. Obviously videos from YouTube, Vimeo, UBC, my client's website and our competition. So we create content. We distribute it to third-party sites. They talk about us, Google likes them, Google says, hey, this person is relevant and puts them on the hub. So we'll get back to how that works, why it matters, and how we understand Google and how Google interacts with us. And hopefully this makes sense, but that's what I do. Yeah. So and if it doesn't make sense, please ask questions. <laughs> yeah. We are here for you. <laughs> and I talk fast. So if you need me to slow down, tell Steve in the chat and he can tell me to slow down. Um, <laughs> but I'm, I'm a naturally fast talker. And I will do my best to try to accommodate that. This is one that you don't want to put me on one and a half speed if you watch later. So why content, right? Content is king, has been for forever. And it comes into the Google trust bias. And that's a term that I made up and I think adequately explains why Google works the way that it does. And that Google is like Amazon. Right? Amazon doesn't make the shoes, it doesn't make the jeans, but it curates them and says, who makes the best quality, quality product that's going to serve my client? And Google doesn't make the news, it doesn't make the content, it curates it. And so we know that Google wants to give us the best information possible. So in the dawn of time when Google came about, right, and you sat through the dial-up of the and, you know, it's 40 seconds, and you say, hey, Google, how many bugs are in Africa? Google would say, here's five websites that will tell you how many bugs are in Africa, right? Based on what it thought was the most relevant. And you've probably seen over the last five, six, seven, 10 years that when you go to Google and say, hey, Google, how old is the queen? Or when did the queen die? Google will tell you, right? It's not gonna make you search for that anymore. I'll say the queen was 98 years old or however old she was. Do you wanna know how old Prince Henry is? Do you wanna know where Princess Diana used to live? And it tries to keep you there. And that's called the zero click. And that 50% of people go to Google, Google answers their question and they don't leave, right? Because Google is now in the business of data. But aside from keeping you on Google, their priority has never shifted. That it wants to provide you the most relevant content possible. Because they know that if they don't, you'll go to Bing or Yahoo or DuckDuckGo, someone that will answer your question to the best of their ability. All right, so Google wants to give you the best that it possibly can if it can't give you the stuff. And so we know that. We inherently know that. Like on this weird deep level, we know that the organic rankings is that Google says this will answer your question. Right, which is why, you know, 
people skip the paid ads. Now the paid ads don't work. And we'll show that later. But we know that Google wants to give us the good stuff first. And we'll get into, right, what, this is why it matters. Because as people search for your things, the best ROI comes from these hot leads that are looking for your stuff. And I'm skipping ahead. And I think I'll just keep skipping ahead because we'll get to research. How people do research and use Google, right? Using this Google trust bias is that when my dad used to go buy a car, it was always a Ford Taurus. We'd go to 17 different dealerships and it'd take six months. And that was how it was done. And now research has shifted from having to drive around and check all these different places out to using Google say, hey, Google, answer my question, right? Again, Google says, someone's looking for a dog groomer in Boston for German Shepherds. Like if you're talking about that, you are going to rank much better than this generic dog washing company or you know, a dentist. The only reason you might get a search that has no contact, context whatsoever is that no one has anything about it that Google could pull for. Because again, Google wants to answer your question. And this is, goes into traffic. And I love this because I just talked to someone right before this on a one-to-one. -one, and she's like, you know, I don't click on the first page result. Like I only click on the second. I was like, well, cool. You're one of the 20% that clicks on the second. Like <laughs> as, as a person, not just a business owner, but as a person, we have a hard time thinking that people do it differently than us. I don't buy knickknacks. It blows my mind that that can be a million dollar business or however much like knickknack stores sell them and people are successful doing it, but it, I can't fathom that. Same thing with paid ads. I don't click on paid ads. Not to say they don't work because five to 7% of billions of searches is a lot of money, but it's just not who I am, right? And so when we look at this, we have to kind of disassociate from ourselves of how Google provides and how people interact with Google. And that when it comes to being organic and ranking, you need to be on that first page. You want to be on that first page because this is really how it works. And that the lion's share of 40% roughly goes to that first one because of that Google trust bias, right? We know Google's gonna answer my question the best of its ability. 20% goes a second because maybe it didn't answer it, but this next one might. And the third, right, 10%, it, it, it trails off. And the second page is where websites go to die because no one wants to keep clicking. We'll just redo our search. Yeah, Google doesn't know, obviously, like I need to throw in some different keywords or something, right? But this is why organic marketing is so important and how Google works with that, right? And why, it, why it's important for you to be there. And so we get into ROA, right? And the ROI of how does that work and why, does, why is that important again? So there's another me, slide. Uh, yeah, yeah. Please, please uh, define all acronyms as you go along. <laughs> Sir, return on ad spend. Right. So if you are spending money on content, you're paying someone to provide content or write blogs or post things or make YouTube or any of these things that is a content based platform and SEO, right, your own website stuff, you get a higher return on your money versus paid ads. And it's seen across the board, except for generally e com isn't. So if you have some e com people here that sell on Etsy and stuff like that, or like the ad spend, the return on investment, the ROI from uh, pay-per-click versus uh, SEO. Actually, pay-per-click outperforms it a little bit. So again, like the caveat is, you know, what I say is very broad general and it's kind of the stereotype of like, this is true for a majority of things, but the there are always outliers, right? Of this doesn't work for this business. Like I'm not a good fit for restaurants. And it's just how it is. Um, but when it breaks it down, right? This is like, again, going into numbers is that content over long-term, because it is a long-term play, right? Pay-per-click ads is an immediate cash flow thing, and it's important to have immediate cash flow. But when you look to grow a business sustainably and future build, content, once it steamrolls and it builds up speed and you take those, you know, six to 12 months of buildup, it starts outperforming and gives you much better, higher quality leads, better return on investment, better return on ad spend. And it just dominates so yeah i'm glad you said this actually because it it seems like people are in the either or camp but clearly if you're going to do pay-per-click you still have to work on your organic side of things it's a both right the thing about pay-per-click is that you're held hostage and i don't say that lightly because when you stop paying for that you disappear it's like you never existed right. when i make content for my clients like that first page that's there forever right like you stop using my services, it doesn't disappear. You don't lose that content. It's still there making an asset for your business. So it's a, it's a huge distinction in that you want to build something long-term. 
Mm -hmm. um, hopefully we're all familiar with Gary V, right? He says you should make 60 pieces of content a day, which is unreal. And unless that's like what you do and you have a team that follows you around, it's not really feasible. But the idea being that content, again, is king and important and will do wonders for a business that actually takes it to heart. And the question being then is, what is the right content for you? Right. If I'm a lawyer, the right content for me isn't Facebook posts or Facebook stuff because I'm Facebook is where people go to escape. Does that make sense? Like, yeah. As a lawyer, I would want to be on Google or YouTube where people are searching for these types of specific answers. You know, if I'm selling again, like a knickknack or some like fun thing, Facebook or Instagram, something that like is an education value and people are going to be like, Ooh, that looks fun. All right, so being where your audience is, is super important. Yeah, I think that's a good point because uh, I think Facebook, because people came into Facebook as pretty much the only game in town when they started doing this, they feel like it's still that way, but really going specific to the platform where your audience is, is the best way to go. It really is. I have a podcast, right? And I sourced a lot of my business um, meetings from Facebook. And I realized that the quality of lead was very low. Not that, you know, Facebook people aren't bad, but just like, that's where the freebie seekers are now. That's where the people who don't take the action live for the most part. If I want people who are serious about this stuff, I'm going to go to Twitter or I'll go to LinkedIn or I'll go to Podmatch, which is like Tinder for podcasters. Like I'm going to these places where people are more serious about their craft and not looking to escape. Mm -hmm. So it's finding out where your people live and making a customer avatar. Right. Now, the old way of SEO was like, hey, I'm going to build a bunch of backlinks and I'm going to make, you know, so like a blog and I'll post on my blog and I'll do these like SEO type of thingies and I'll pat myself on the back. And then Google says, hey, do something. Who does this? I'll be like, hey, he patted himself on the back. He obviously knows what he's doing. All right. That was kind of the old way. And it worked. It was really good. And Google has shifted from this, like, I talk about myself and I'm awesome to who talks about you, right? Branding, visibility. Google reviews. We've noticed right now that Google reviews is a thing and there's little stars under people's names uh, in their businesses. Like they have 17 five-star reviews. This business has 50 five-star reviews because Google recognizes third-party credibility and they're very strict. Now, before everyone's like, I'm going to go buy some reviews, please don't. <laughs> Google is hard cracking down on that. Like hard cracking down and banning sites and blacklisting sites and like buying reviews is one of the worst things you can do for your business. And using yeah, it. I, I'm, it I'm told that there are some people in chapters who are asking people in their chapter who have used their their services to give them a Google review. But what happened was everyone did it at the same time, and they actually kind of lost some credibility on that because of this kind of suddenly they've had a Google reviews out mm -hmm. for years and they got like twelve on one day. Yeah. Yep. So like again, Google's smart and they know that like what seems realistic and what's not realistic for you. And I live here in this brand visibility. And again, what I do with the SEO, SEO is search engine optimization, not like a specific type of service. And what I live in in the SEO PR marketing world is with brand visibility. We create content and then we distribute to sites like NBC, ABC, CBS, Fox, Yahoo, Bloomberg, Media Market Watch, right? Because the more people that talk about you, Google says, hey, this person's relevant, right? Just like BNI, if I talk about myself, cool but if steve talks about me i've just gained credibility and if well Jenny i don't Butts like to brag talk, right but <laughs> if the more people that talk about me the more credible i become right? right jenny butts talks about me i've gained credibility right so google says who talks about you and then google tracks everything right we have google analytics or if you don't you should right and tracks the clicks and says is this website providing value it tracks the traffic or is it a bot that like screams through your page? Is it a person who's taking time to read it? It's tracking like how long they're on your page. Are they clicking the other links? Are they reading your content? Are they engaged? Are they getting value? Again, Google is in the value play that wants to service the person that's looking at your stuff. And if it doesn't, that's a problem. It goes to phone calls. Do you have a phone associated with your business? 70% of the world uses Android phones. Google's tracking everything. Do you have an office? Are you a dentist, a chiropractor, a dog groomer? Are you an electrician? Are people coming to your office? Google, we have GPS. We don't like to admit it. Google knows where we are. They're tracking that. Are you being mentioned, right? Are people searching you? Are they comparing you? Steve versus Steve, 
Stephen versus some other marketing company, right? The more that you have of any of these, the more trust and credibility with Google you gain and the higher you will rank and the more traffic it will send you because it is that third party validation of this person is providing value. All right. Hopefully that makes really like, a lot of sense. This is mm -hmm. like a key slide of understanding Google's shift from I pat myself on the back and I get exposure to third party trust, credibility, other brands talking about me, social proof. Yeah. Right. And when you have that kind of social proof, right, you get higher math livings, math listings. You're more specific in neighborhoods, right? When you're on sites, you can put that. And in America, we like to be seen on or you know featured in, and that actually can increase conversions by twenty to forty percent. Right. That is a benefit from having visibility. And the other part that I think is really important, and if you take nothing away, let's make this like one of the first takeaways from everything that we're talking about is consistency in what you do. And that Google, I have a podcast, right? Here's one of my like going off. I have a podcast, I'm like 60 episodes in. I could walk away and never make another episode, right? My podcast doesn't disappear, but Google's gonna stop sending people to it because I'm not relevant. I'm not providing value. I've built a house and I've walked away. And what happens when you build a house and you walk away? It eventually falls into disrepair. Squatters might move in, it'll burn down, right? Going back to Google's priority, Google wants to give the best user experience and answer your questions. So if I have someone who's putting out content weekly or monthly or bi-monthly, whatever it is, as long as it's consistent and says, hey, Google, I'm still here. Hey, I'm still taking care of these people. Google's going to award traffic to that because Google cares. And when you walk away, you're like, you know, I tried something for two weeks and it didn't work. Well, yeah, two weeks is nothing. Right? Google doesn't care about two weeks. It wants to see a consistent I will take care of people if you send them to me. So if you make a YouTube channel, go all in on YouTube, right? If you're doing social media stuff, go whatever you do. If you're doing blog posts, be consistent, right? That is yeah, and it's a good piece. point, by the way, that uh, if you have your website and it's done, but you did it four years ago and you haven't added any pages to it or changed anything, that's not going to help. Yeah. Right? Get, you make sure you get it active and going. Get your Google business profile on there and, you know, yeah. post on that once a week or once every other week, like whatever it is, whatever action you're going to take, take action and take it consistently. It doesn't have to be huge, but the fact that you're consistent is how it works. It's like a plant, right? Mm -hmm. As you water a plant or, you know, it will grow. And if you neglect the plant, the plant doesn't disappear, but it will wither up and it will die and it'll go away and will be replaced by a different plant who's getting watered, i.e. your competition, right? Right. Okay, let's see. I think I skipped a, there we go, name song, niching down. So going into what kind of content is right for your business. And this, I think, is where people struggle because even myself, like I have a hard time niching down what I do because I don't want to exclude a client. I don't want to lose business because, you know, I say I'm going to work with dentists and, you know, I'm not getting a chiropractor, right? But when you are specific, you are relevant, right? When you're general, you're not relevant. You know, I'm not it's making like the top nine, right? It, it is, right? Like you may have three people in the same category, but we all speak about different things because when you're specific about what you do, you solve a need and a problem. And that's what people really care about, Yeah. right? Being a generalist is, you know, hey, come to my site. I might be able to help make you better. But if you're like, hey, this is exactly what I do and why I do it. I have confidence in that and I'm going to go seek that out. All right. And so same thing. So this goes back into now kind of a, an easier to understand metaphor, right? I hurt my wrist. I'm not going to go see the finger, hand, elbow, wrist doctor, right? I was playing golf. I'm going to go see wrist injury for golfers doctor. Mm -hmm. right? That is how we do it. And I have another slide here coming up. Uh, blah, 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 super specific. Here we go. This is, <laughs> and let me know people like, no, go back. I want to know something. Uh, I, I promise it's a, you'll get more value here. This is niching down hard in the content that you create, right? Like if you are doing wellness coaching, don't necessarily be like, Hey, here's the top 10 ways to sleep better at night. Like you need to do something more of, you know, how to sleep better if you're an insomniac and you can't sleep even after drinking five cups of coffee. Mm -hmm. right? Like, 
addressing specific things that people are doing and needs because this is how people search, right? A lot of people are like, oh, I should, you know, dentist is high, but, you know, a dentist in LA is better or root canal treatment in Los Angeles is even better. It's more specific. And real example, I was driving from Everett to Renton. I was biting my nail. It chipped a tooth because I'm just asinine, but I pulled up my phone and I typed in the emergency chip tooth repair available now Kirkland, Washington. Nowhere in there is best dentist Kirkland. Right. right. This is how people search. And again, as a business owner, sometimes it's hard for us to differentiate how people are searching based on what we think we should appear like, right? As a dentist, like I want that ego and pride of like, yeah, I'm the best dentist. I'm the best SEO guy. I'm the best smart, like whatever. But that's not how people search, okay. right? I am searching for a need and a product. I'm not looking for best plumber. I'm looking for emergency hot water tank repair available now. Right? Yeah, that's this is a typical mistake I think that people make where they try to cast the mistake. widest net, but by doing that, they get lost in the shuffle. Right. Or jeans, right? Like, and going to buy an intent. So we all know quality of lead, right? Like a cold lead versus a hot lead. Someone who's ready to buy. Someone who, like, we threw something in their face and like, ah, what is this? I don't go to Google and say Google jeans and hope that it shows me what I'm looking to buy. And I'm not a serious buyer. But if I type in size 36 black distressed hammer pants, like, I'm looking for something that I'm actively going to buy. Mm -hmm. right? And same thing. This goes into and I think super important here, again, take, take away number two, if you will, Google's going to tell you, hey, best dentist is where you want to live. Like that's going to be $70 a click, super high competition. Yeah, it knows how high the competition is for sure. And it wants you to spend your money with them, right? Like Google's not some altruistic person, entity being that's like, I'm here for your own good and benefit, right? They're here to make money off of us. They're also here to provide value, but they're here for money, right? Like that's why they exist. But that's not how the people are searching, right? And it's really expensive to try to dethrone the best whatever and wherever thing you're in. It's just, it's not worth the money. What you want to do again is that like long tail, I have a need, I have a product, I have a solution, I have a benefit, I'm doing X, Y, and Z. And you make your content about that, right? There's a super popular YouTube channel called Dad, How Do I? And it's a dude. And all he does is like, how do I change a light bulb? How do I replace a furnace filter? How do I fix a dishwasher that isn't spraying the top rack like all this stuff is very specific and he's got millions and millions of followers and it's not trying to cast this net over everything right? and it's these long tail keywords 15 percent of google searches every day have never been searched before and it boggles my mind every time i say that because millions of searches and 15 percent being new but it's because that's how people search right right we're not all searching best dentist we're searching i have a need i'm not looking for dog groomer auburn i'm looking for Someone who's going to take care of my German shepherd who bites, right? I have a bitey dog, whatever. I don't have a dog. I have two kids and sometimes they're bitey, but you know, okay. So <laughs> hopefully that was good. How am I doing on time here? Half hour. All right. We're doing good. So this slide is for me. Uh, feel free to laugh in the chat if you'd like, because again, I talk circular and I'm sure I missed something, but Google's main priority, right? Is provide us value. Showing up where your audience is. Let's talk just a smidge more about that because I think that's really important and make that takeaway number three. You need to put yourself in a position where you're talking to the right people and making the right type of content, right? TikTok versus YouTube. So TikTok is high exposure with a short shelf life. YouTube is short exposure with infinite shelf life, right? You're building an asset when you make a YouTube video. You're not building an asset when you make a TikTok video. Right. So thinking of like, how do I want to position myself? Is my product suitable for the platform that I'm using? Right. What type of content should I do? I was talking with uh, one of my uh, clients who does roofing this morning and it was her, his office manager. And I was like, you need to make a YouTube video with your foreman and all your foreman should do is just drop knowledge. Like he doesn't have to be funny. He doesn't have to be witty. Just like the dad, how do I stuff? Be like all the basic stuff, like what kind of shoes should I use if I'm walking on a roof? What's the difference between a sloped roof versus a, you know, high pitch versus low pitch? Or what does 12 to one mean when in roofing terms? Or what does, you know, how do I make sure all the nails get picked up or what type of shovels, or whatever it is, but just basic, how do I knowledge or content? Because again, that's what people are looking for. There used to be this fad of hot dog, hot dogs versus legs on Instagram, because we realized that like everyone's, it was like this, uh, like a satire on perfection, right? Steve, do you remember that? Did you see that going through? 
vaguely, yeah. Right? Like we all had this idea of like everyone's trying to paint this perfect picture of us. The authenticity has replaced that. Yeah. Yeah. And Google's the same, right? They're going for that authenticity now. Who's mentioning you? Who's talking about you? Are you talking about yourself? Do you have other content about yourself, right? Where can people find you? Is it just your own website patting yourself on the back or do you have more that validates you, right? And what kind of content is it? Is it valuable? Are you painting a picture of perfection or are you actually providing real value to people, right? Top 10 ways to sleep better at night. Mm, that's okay. But actually like speak to a specific problem and that's going to do way better for you. So show up where your people are. And if you haven't done like a customer avatar, I don't do them for my clients. You need to do that for yourself, but like figure that out, right? Who is your client? Are they male or female? Are they old? Do they have kids? Are they young? Do they like pets? Like, where do they live? That kind of stuff that will help you tailor your content and make relevant value for them. So if nothing else, takeaway number four or five or whatever we're on, that's you know, speak to your audience. Uh, we talked about how people use Google for research, right? That's that long tail. I'm typing into Google to solve my issue. I'm not typing in, you know, Stephen Lentz marketing because you don't know me, right? You're typing in marketing services for X, Y, and Z. And the same thing of like, I've talked to people like, oh, I rank in Google for my name. Well, that's cool. It's like you open a coffee shop and the only people allowed to buy your drinks are people that you've handed your business card to, right? It's not a sustainable model. Referrals are great and the best, the best way to get clients, but it's not a sustainable necessarily way that you can count on getting business. Like, yeah, I get like five referrals every week, every single day. Like this is how it works. It's not a clockwork thing. So you need to be visible to get the people who are looking for you when they're looking and not be reliant on having a network of people that do it for you. Um, things you can do to increase your visibility. Cool. So we talked about YouTube, right? Podcasting is great. I do marketing again, and I use my podcast as a way to get clients. So as a marketer, I got tired of like people being on Facebook again, like low quality leads being like, how do I do this? And then, you know, 50,000 people like, I can help you with your marketing. I was like, ah, it's sleazy. I don't like signing the DMs. So I made a podcast and I said, Hey, does anyone want to be on my podcast? And I'll rep your brand and pimp your product and I'll make you sound good. Like we'll make content for you that you can repurpose for your own stuff. Then I had business owners reach out to me and say, Hey, I want to be on your show. And I talked to them for 30 minutes, 40 minutes, and I make them sound great. And we talk about them. And at the end of it, guess what happens? Steve, do you want to take a guess? Uh, it helps you in the end, right? Because you've got people on your podcast, but they're getting visibility. They're curious about me. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've spent an hour talking about them and now they want to know about me. I've right. built a relationship, right? Mm -hmm. All things being equal, we do business with our friends. All things being unequal, we still do business with our friends. Yeah. And so by making a podcast, I'm making relationships with these business owners and I don't pitch my stuff. Right. And so at the end of this thing, you're like, wow, we talked about me and like, I got into my past and my childhood and how I became an entrepreneur and doing this stuff. And they're like, who's this guy that I talked to for 40 minutes and told my life story. And, and what is the name of this podcast? Yeah. It's called subject to change. Subject to change. Okay, yeah, blue go. background, blue background, white lightning bolt. So subject to change in white letters. Um, but th that's all it is. Like I, I rep their brand, pimp their product, make them sound good say, Hey, you know, where can people find you? Is there anything that you wish I'd asked you or that you, you know, one thing you wanted to go back to. And then after that, like we make a relationship and they're like, Hey, I know someone that I think you'd be a good fit for. Let me refer you to them. Or let's make a follow-up sales call because I've actually been looking for someone that does what you do, right? Like building relationships. So that's one thing that you can do is make a podcast. It doesn't have to be perfect. Right. I tell people I don't do, I do zero editing, right? You want to do stuff with it unless something goes horribly wrong. Like I'll shorten it up or whatever, but it is as it is, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's easy for me. Um, baseline SEO. I didn't talk about this. This is important, right? I don't do it. I don't do web design when I have when I take on a client. I don't have access to their site. I don't need access to their site because it's content and third party stuff. But your site should be optimized for all devices. Mm -hmm. Your site should have Google My Business, which is now Google Business Profile. Your site should have Google Analytics, right? You should have correct headers. You should have a good layout. It should be easy to use. It should be informative. You should have like pages that are specific to the services that you do, right? There's that baseline SEO exists. And while I say, you know, like, I don't want to like talk bad about SEO. A lot of it, I think is not as relevant as it used to be. 
right? That's, that's mm-hmm. my pitch. This is why I don't live in that area. But there is stuff that I think is very valuable, important and needs to happen. And is valuable to have an SEO person be like, hey, I'm going to make your site the way that it needs to be, right? That's, that's my spiel. Yeah, um, I mean, I guess, I guess the, the message here is that SEO uh, only gets you so far. It does. It does. Right. And, and there's like, what I do works even if you don't have that baseline SEO, but it works way better if you do. Because right. Google Josh says SEO is dead, so he's uh, <laughs> again SEO. We have this preconceived conception that SEO is a specific service, mm-hmm. but it's not. SEO only means search engine optimization. Right? Okay. It doesn't mean like I work on your site and I make blogs for you. But that's what we equate it with. Just like we think a Kleenex is like all facial tissues are Kleenexes. Mm-hmm. They're not. It's, they're different products and some of them have different uses. Like SEO has gotten a bad rap because enough people peed in the pool, right? Like that's, that's kind of how it works. Uh, all right, being visible in a lot of places is more beneficial, right? Obviously, hopefully we've kind of covered that and that makes a lot of good sense. Like the more places that you are, Google says, hey, you're relevant, right? You're on YouTube, cool. You're on Instagram, okay. Right. You have your own blog or website or social network or whatever it is that you do, like you will get more recognition and credibility because Google says you are providing value to people. Right. Obviously, the more places you are, you are doing something and Google wants to reward action. Yeah, well said. Right. Agree. All right. Why would you want to use content marketing for business? How's it from paid ads? All right. This is good too, right? Your website, when we think of a website, most people's website is not an asset. And when you look at an exit plan of like leaving in one to five years of your business or down the road being like, Hey, I want this to be something I can sell. Like websites sell for real money. And by real money, I mean like sometimes tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars. And what makes them valuable is that you get ongoing organic traffic and it ranks. When you have those things, you have created an asset for yourself and your business. If you don't have that, you have a website that someone may or may not buy your business for your book of business and be like, no, the site sucks and make a new one right? Because there's no value there. So making this, making this long-term play of like, hey, I'm going to create something that's worth value in your business, right? Marketing is an investment. A lot of us think of it as an expense, but good marketing is an investment in your business that grows it and makes it ongoing. Um, yeah. I mean, we could beat that horse forever, but that's the very basic general takeaway that I think can't be overstated. Uh, we can take a couple of quick questions, I think. And then go into the rest of it if you want, or I can just power through the rest and then go straight to Yeah, let's, let's go through the rest of it and then just jump in because people will be adding questions as we go along. Perfect. Okay. <clears throat> so, right, that's a lot. And you're like, hey, that's, you know, if I want to show up everywhere and I want to get brand visibility and I want to be seen and I want first page results because that's where traffic goes and that's where people are buying services, whether it's coaching or lawyer services or whatever it is, like that's how Google works and how people search. Like that's where the customers are. How can I do that without being overwhelmed? And that's what I do. I do content so that way you can do what you do best. And by doing that, I use, I was a firefighter again for 10 years and we use pictures. We call it firefighter proof. Uh, But we create blog articles, press releases, news articles, infographics, video, audio. Um, And then we do the other half of that because what do you do when you have content? Well, you have to put it somewhere. And so we do distribution. So every campaign that we run gets distributed to 400 plus media sites. And so we do both halves of that coin. And so what we do is we look at, again, going to that targeted buying intent of people, right? Where do you want to show up if you have a physical location or a general service area? What are the things that you provide, right? And so we color code it based on, are you visible there? Red means you are invisible, right? You don't show up on Google. If I'm searching for, you know, root canals in Parkdale, you ain't there. But... Mm -hmm. We take that and we use what we do, just like women's wellness coaching to get you all over the front page. And then the stars is competition, right? And that goes like, is it a bunch of Facebook and LinkedIn stuff? It's not high competition. Is it national brands and Yelp and like review sites? It's higher competition. So we look at like, who, who are we fighting against and how, like, how much work do we need to actually like dethrone the Kings, if you will. Right? And our goal is to take you from invisible to visible for all the stuff that you do. And this is why content, again, in organic stuff is a long-term play because each campaign we do focuses on a specific thing because that's how 
again, Google works. Google wants people to specifically talk about issues and problems. And if you're going to do it yourself, again, you need to talk about specific issues and problems. Because by being specific, you will get the traffic. By being a generalist, Google's going to pass you over just like everyone else who's a generalist. Right? Hey, you might you know, help someone with their elbow. Cool. There's a million other people who might help someone with their elbow. But they help someone who like plays tennis and is in kids' youth leagues. That makes more sense for this person. I'm going to send them to that person. Right? So we're very specific. We target each one individually and it takes time. And over the course of six to eight months, we see that snowball effect of traffic increasing because we're casting nets over the water. And as you cover more surface area, you, you catch more fish, right? And the places that you post are important too, right? Yahoo Finance is a big deal. Google trusts them, right? So when you, cause you're like, hey, I could go buy a PR from Bloomberg for a thousand dollars. Yeah, but if you only do like one PR article, that's good, but again, like be consistent, but also recognize that one article from one, one website will only get you so far, which is that why we distribute to hundreds of websites. And it's just, it's a lot. So why well, it's good for you. Sorry, Jeremy, I think your name was Jeremy, uh, you know, talking about SEO, but when it comes to what we do, we are cheaper than an SEO agency generally, and, you know, we're hiring even someone to do this for you. And we're just more efficient. It's what we do. We're very good at it. We get results. Um, so yeah, this goes into, you know, here I am. Would you like to have someone help you with this? And if so, right, my team and I have set aside some time to do that. I have a calendar link at the end. If people are like, hey, this actually sounds good for my business. Like I need to grow my business. I want to scale up, right? I'm here for, I'm here to help you. I want business, small businesses that have the same advantages that big businesses have. And that's why you have McDonald's and all these people, you know, posting all the time and all these different places and the PR and all that stuff. Like, this is the big business game. And they, they recognize that. And the small businesses haven't had that advantage. So free consult to chat about your business. There's a caveat, right? Like, I don't want to be like, oh, I want to talk about it. I only have so much time in the day. I have kids. So I kind of have to weed it out. If you want to talk with me, you need to be in a place where you can actually service more clients, right? If you're at a spot where you're at capacity and like this isn't in your wheelhouse, but you're curious, I... Like, I love you, but don't talk to me because, <laughs> right? Like, we're just going to waste each other's time. Yeah, I think that, you know, given uh, that we've got, you know, a few hundred people on this thing today and, and more will see it afterwards, uh, it should be those who are really ready to move forward. Yeah, uh, absolutely, right? Like, this, this is the qualifying. Like, be, right. be in a position to service clients, but not to service them, but do a good job. Because, yeah. like, my standard is that you take care of your clients. Just like Google trusts that we take care of people that it sends to, I want to make sure that you're able to take care of your people. Right. Yeah. And by the way, to me, it seems that those who aren't ready to work with you should be working on the things that you talked about today because yeah. you gave us some gold today yeah. about, you know, working on all our other platforms and, and getting a consistent message out there. And, uh, that's all, the stuff to work on to get there. All marketing and visibility costs something. Mm -hmm. It either costs time or it costs money. Right. Right. If you don't have money, that's OK. Right. It just means that you need to spend time making the content and doing things yourself and finding other avenues to be visible, right? But it's still like, yes, time is free roughly or Facebook is free. But if you're like hiring someone to work on Facebook for you, that's not free, right? Like there is that cost of people doing that. Your time is worth something. So mm -hmm. yes, your time is free. It's limited, but there's a cost. So figure out, you know, what's valuable to you, what, how you want to move forward. Um, also, again, another qualifying thing is that you need to understand that this is a long-term play. Right? Like we see a snowball effect in six to eight months with our traffic. And like, that's the general average. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you get it right immediately. And someone's like, you know, this was the search blew up, but generally like it's a content time thing. And I think as a business owner, and especially in today's age of like instantaneous gratification, long-term plays are hard sometimes to, to get on board with. Um, again, realistic expectations, right? I can't guarantee like you will be number one as soon as we publish this thing immediately. Like, Google doesn't want people to understand how Google works and I don't own Google. I can't guarantee that you're going to be number one immediately. It's based on the competition, right? And like the women's wellness coaching is not a competitive keyword phrase, but SEO is. I ran a premium campaign for an SEO company, uh, another BNI member who was curious about my services. And they went from not existing to being ranked number 19 for a while off of one campaign. Still not on the first page, but being, being able to recognize like, hey, they just beat out like, 
a couple thousand other SEO companies with doing a premium campaign. And that if they were to continue taking action and consistency, they would rank up and do it. So, right. Can't guarantee like you do this, this will be here. But I do guarantee that what I do works because we understand that Google works off of brand now and not just patting yourself on the back. Mm -hmm. So, and trust the process, right? I don't go to dentist's office and tell them how to clean my teeth, right? I, I trust that they're gonna do a good job and take care of me. Um, and again, I do this because I want you to have the same advantages that big businesses have. I like the underdog. I've, you know, I've struggled my whole life with different things and situations and circumstances and I wanna make life easier for people, so. Uh, and bottom part is important too, right? Like if you're like, hey, this sounds cool. I might not take you as a client. Again, I don't work with everyone. You own a restaurant, you're like, hey, this sounds cool. Like, sorry, man. Like you should do something different. And I can talk to you about that, but I'm not the right fit. So I may or may not invite you to work with me. And that's okay if I do or don't. But even if I do invite you, you don't have to accept it. Right. <laughs> it's not yeah, like you know, I, I think, I think, that a, I think it's a, a good way of, of putting it out there because you don't want to waste your time or or their time or their money if it's not a good fit. No, that's yeah, I have standards, right? Like I came from the firefighting service in that world. Like I became a firefighter to help people and I'm no longer a firefighter, but I still have a desire to help people. And mm -hmm. if we're a good fit, I'll tell you we're a good fit. And if we're not, like, I'll tell you we're not. Like, I don't just tell people you need to buy a premium campaign because it's cost more. It's, does this make sense for you because you're in a competitive niche or you're not? Like women's wellness coach, you don't need premium campaigns. A lawyer, you do, right? Like, so uh, that's it. And then if that's interesting to you, here's three ways to contact me, right? You can go to my website, and there's a consultation button there and I'm gonna change that. But it goes to my Calendly link. If you wanna just hit the Calendly link, you can copy and paste that or you know, type that into your browser and book a time. Or if you wanna like chat me up a little bit and schedule something via email, that's my personal email. I'm happy to chat with you there. Um, if you're weird and spammy, I'll block you. So that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's how you get a hold of me. I'm happy to chat, so. Okay. Hopefully so, this is good. Um, yeah, why don't we jump into Q and A right now? We'll leave your the slide up so they can uh, get in touch with you as needed, uh, and see what people are asking. Um, let's see what happens if one is a solopreneur with no brick and mortar company, just a virtual business of one. Um, yeah, that's that's a great question. So. Yeah. Brick and mortar company, like, again, some things work better than others. And when it comes to e-com, uh, right, there's that trade-off of paid ads versus like organic content stuff. So it really depends of what's your niche. What are you selling? Like, what is your business? You know, my wife owns a zero waste grocery store and I've run cable campaigns for like organic uh, vegan soap. It didn't perform all that great. Like it helped, but like paid ads would have been way better and doing like Facebook ads and YouTube ads, like other things that people are looking for in that realm. So again, like I'm not the right fit for everyone. And I ran that for my wife because she's my wife and I just did it. But like, there's so much that goes into that question of who you are, what you provide, where you are. That's like a an actual legitimate business coach consult of how you should approach your business. And from what I know from your brief question, I'm not qualified to be like, this is exactly what you need to do. So, right. Uh, we, we okay, wish I could so, be more specific there. So Jordan's asking a, a very good question, which is how important is video content in all of this? And when should you shoot your own videos versus hiring someone to do it professionally? Yeah, absolutely. So hopefully Jordan, you're familiar with Gary Vaynerchuk or Gary V, right? And it goes back to this authenticity and, you know, dad, how do I videos and stuff? It, being yourself is the most important thing in today's age and the current time that we live in. And you say, hey, like, and be like, boring is fine. I think I'm boring. Steve probably doesn't think he's the most interesting man in the world, but to I other people. Different, but okay. That's <laughs> uh, bold of me to assume, <laughs> bold of me. But we are interesting to other people, right? Why, do, why are celebrities so popular? Because we're interested in someone else and there's access to that, right? So when you make a video of whatever you do, whether you are a roofer, a plumber, you own a restaurant, like, you just make content. It doesn't have to be amazing. And build it on a platform like YouTube, right? Make a YouTube channel of, hey, this is why we use this type of sauce, or this is you know, how we find rats in houses, or boring informational stuff that people might be curious about because people are gonna be that. And then be yourself, right? If you like dad jokes, tell dad jokes. If you like 
are silly, be silly. If you're not, then don't, but be authentic because that, shun, that comes through and people care about that. Yeah. That is the currency of videos today. Video is important, right? Yeah. We do video not because um, we want to necessarily hit that, but we are on that because it's a platform that's important, right? For omni-channel marketing and Google saying, hey, are you here? That's why we do it, but, right? Uh, Dana. We'll move on. The real estate agent in Hawaii have a website and a blog. Excellent, Dana. We've blogged about all sorts of things in Hawaii. Should I be more specific or Hawaii specific? No. Be as specific as you can, right? Talk about single ba- single family homes on the beach. Talk about luxury hotels in the hills. Talk about, you know, shark attacks and, you know, the coast or whatever it is. Like, as specific as you can be is going to be better because that's how people search. People aren't going to search real estate Hawaii, right? Yeah. They're going to search very specific stuff Uh, well i think that that yeah and that next question is very simple uh similar this one talks about uh a solution for nutrition and body contouring so very specific niche business there um yeah yeah so the the same strategy and one thing that we have a hard time thinking about is being like i am so unique compared to everyone else but the same strategy applies because it comes from the mind of your client and so Going back to that slide, one of the things that we do, and I didn't show you, when I take on a client, we sit down together because they're like, well, how do you write about my business if you don't know it? I don't know anything about plumbing. I have a client that is a plumber. And what we did is we sat down, we go over all the services and the services and products they provide. We go over all the solutions and benefits. We go over all the problems that they solve. We go over all the locations they want to be in and all the FAQs that they get from their stuff, their people. And from that, that's how we get that buying intent. I'm looking for a hot water tank replacement. Um, you know, emergency is going to be one of the keywords. Available now is going to be some like specific descriptive keywords in Toronto. Right? I'm looking for a soundproofing wherever in Calgary. Whatever it is, that's how we do it. So I would say look at your body contouring nutrition. What are what are your features and benefits? What are the problems you're solving? What are the solutions? What is the specific product? Is it keto? Like what does you know 14 milligram of dexyhydrine mean in keto? Right? Like people are searching for these types of things. And I made that up because I, that's not even a word, but there is jargon in every industry and people are searching for that. So within your body contouring nutrition, what are the things that people are looking for? What are the things that you're talking about? What are they curious about? And that is how you're going to unearth the gold. And that's how we do it every single time for every single client. Uh, are there any tools I recommend to assist in constraining with content keywords? No. Because all the big tools that Google is going to provide you are going to be skewed data, right? It's going to tell you, hey, you should be best dentist LA because it's expensive and I want your money. And it'll give you a range of like, hey, there's, you know, zero to 5,000 people searching for this word. Well, cool. That doesn't give me any real tangible benefit of knowing if it's like five people or 4,999, right? Like Google hides the data and gives you free tools and other people provide tools, but all the tools are the same and they grab that aggregate data that's out there and tries to make it fit the best way that they can think possible. Your best friend is getting in the mind of your customer and client. That is your best friend for anything that you do. Yeah. Um, and that will give you all the, it will give you all the keywords you need. Absolutely promise you. Uh, starting with cryotherapy. Oh, it disappeared. Oh yeah. So I'm going to um, skip through cause we don't have much time left. So I'm just going to pick uh, cherry pick a few questions for you. Yeah. Um, All right, so for example, uh, well, how about this one? Does all the different content sites need to be linked? Like, do I need to link to my Facebook and Insta on my website? It's helpful, Hmm. right? Like need is a hard word, right? Like an ultimatum type of word. Like you don't need to do anything. You don't need to use my services. It'd be very helpful. You don't need to be on YouTube. It would be helpful. You don't like, you don't need to do it, but it would be helpful. Right. If you, the more links that you can make to Google, be like, Hey, Google, check me out. Like I exist all these different places and they come back to me. Google says, Hey, that makes sense. Right. Right. Like we, we, we mystify how Google works because there's a lot of technical stuff that we don't understand, but at the very basic level, like Google works on the human level of like common sense. Right. Uh, we're to make a podcast anchor FM. It's free. It's easy. Where do I add my long tail search words in my website, front face and content, blah, website, blah, blah, blah. Uh, again, that's SEO stuff. I don't do on-site stuff, right? 
again, for what I do, uh, I don't need access to your site or want access to your site. I don't ever want to be in a position where I can hold someone hostage, be like, you have to keep using my services. So I actually use Tori. Tori redid my website and looks awesome. So if you go to ocelottraffic.com, uh, big shout out to Tori. He's a BNI member as well. And he does. Yeah, Tori's been on the webinar a few times. Yeah. Uh, he does a great job. Yeah. So he just pounded this out in about a month. I was like, hey, man, like <laughs> my website's garbage. Uh -huh. And I don't do, again, on-site stuff. So can you please help me? He's like, yeah. So yeah, hit up Tori if you are looking for a website because he's great. He's a good dude. And I like him. We're friends now. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, all right. Um, Josh says, uh, where should a business prioritize traffic driving SEO optimized content? Uh, let me see that. Where is that? A second. All right. He's the third one down. Third one no, down. Well, no, actually, I'm scrolling. Right. Uh, can you say that one more time? Oh, I yeah, where, where should, should a business, business prioritize traffic yeah. driving SEO optimized content? So again, like this is going to depend on how are you doing it? Are you going like the freebie route? Are you paying someone? Like what is your ability here to get content out? Like the reason I hit 400 plus different media sites and make like seven different types of content is because that's within our capacity and because it gets the best results being omni-channel. Right? We're, we're on the audio channels, we're on the video channels, we're in the text-based channels, we're in the picture infographic channels. Right? The reason, the more places you can be, the better. Um, adding on quality sites is better. Right? But you do what is within your capacity. And again, like, I would love to give you very specific like knowledge, but like, this is exactly what you need to do. But again, I don't know your business. I don't know what you provide. There's a lot of things, like, I don't know your budget or your capacity. I can't say like, this is your definitive action that you should do based for you. Like, that's a very, I think, specific question you're asking. And at this point, like, I'm not your business coach. And I, I don't know how to answer that appropriately without like talking to you for three hours. Yeah. So I appreciate that. And I would love to like tell you, but like, honest trying to be like hey man like i will help you to my ability that's i think the best i can do without accidentally possibly steering you wrong right uh okay so bill asks um about content marketing why would a roofer need to publish an article on cbs news or even a video about the technicalities of roofing being found locally is still the top priority right how do they bill, you asked the right question i publish on yahoo Right? I publish on Bloomberg, I publish on Fox or CBS. I don't publish on those places because I'm hoping to get their readership and viewers. I'm publishing on there because Google trusts them. So when they say, hey, check out Steven, he's a roofer that does business in Bellevue for Bravo Roof Tiles, Google goes, I know who to recommend. Right? Going back to Google's like Amazon. Right? Google's not making the content news. Google says, who provides the service? And when all these places say, hey, check out Steven, he does X, Y, and Z, that's how you get recommended. So I'm looking for, you know, metal roof replacement in Medina. Well, if I have your website, that's just your website and your blog, and I have my website, that's my website, my blog, and 50 pieces of content, who's going, who's Google going to choose to show for that, that specific problem? Guarantee you it's going to be me. And that's why it's important. It's not based on the media outlet that you choose. It's based on, again, going back to BNI, know, like, and trust. Google knows, likes, and trusts these websites. My website, your website probably has like a domain score of zero to 30. Yahoo has a domain score of 94. Right. If they say I do good work here, that's where it comes from. And that's why it's important to be on these sites. That third party validation, those Google reviews, right? It's people saying, hey, check out this person. He's done good work. And that's, that is the entire game now of Google switching to brand instead of Google switching to I pat myself on the back and I rank. That's how it works. All right. On that note, we are going to end. Well, this presentation we're right at just about at the top of the hour uh steven any last words of advice words of wisdom that you can pass along before we sign off uh man take action and be consistent with it right if you yeah. haven't if you haven't niched down again into who you're trying to serve and you're being very general get specific right mm -hmm. body contouring and nutrition that's super vague right be specific right. Is it for men? Is it for women? Are they old? Are there a certain diet? Like, what are you doing? Yeah. Same thing with real estate. Any, any business, be specific. And if you're at a point where you want to scale and build, come see me. There we go. All right. Well, Stephen, thanks so much for being on today. So much great stuff. Uh, and I think people are going to start taking action. 
whether they're getting in contact with you or just working on their own uh, businesses. So thanks so much for sharing. We hope we'll have you back again sometime. Um, and everyone else, give yourselves a CEU and we'll see you all next time. Oh, really quick, Steve. Yes. One more thing. Uh, my, my Calendly link is a uh -huh. rolling two weeks. So if you're like, hey, I'm available, you know, in like a month and a half, it's not yeah. going to show up. So it only shows the first two weeks because that's how I edit my time. So if yeah. you're like, hey, I need to go out, just revisit it. So that sounds good. That's, that's, that's the word.